John Heyman leading the league in information and good morning John with some information today on uh, some of the backstory some of the details on Freddie Freeman's joining the Dodgers take it away. Yeah I mean obviously we know Freddie Freeman got a good deal 162 million six years in Los Angeles you and I would love to go to Los Angeles Matty but it's interesting to look back on what the Braves tried to do here they offered five years for 140 million dollars. Obviously, that seems a little bit less, but you take the taxes into consideration. It's really very close to the same deal. I called my tax guy, Josh Rossman from Long Island, New York, and he tells me 13.3 percent tax in in California, 5.75 state tax in Georgia. The actual difference, $13 million. So that $22 million difference is really $9 million. He gets one more year for $9 million extra in California. So the deals are fairly comparable. Looking back on this, trying to put it back together, I do think that the negotiations, for whatever reason, got soured early on with Freeman and the Braves. We heard a year ago he wasn't happy with the way things were going, and uh, apparently they didn't get better. But the Braves offer was pretty comparable to what Los Angeles eventually signed him for. My understanding, my sources tell me that Freeman's camp came back and offered the Braves a deal for 175 for six or 165 for five. Both would have been much better than what he got in LA in terms of finances. Uh, the Braves held firm at 140 for five, and this is why we are here today. We saw Alex, how emotional he was. I don't know, I haven't talked personally to Freddie Freeman. I've heard that he was very emotional about leaving the Braves. I don't know that he wanted to leave the Braves, but the negotiations, for whatever reason, uh, turned south and sour. Well, I, I do know this. That might be John. Freddie calling you right now, yeah, John. Right. <laughs> I, I hear, and there's information. Is that your tax guy? No, my tax guy, uh, no, I've got bigger <laughs> problems than Freddie on the taxes. He's doing much better than me. There's information today, too, John, that uh, we, we hear some of the details on what Tampa Bay offered Freddie yes. Freeman, and it was very competitive to the surprise of many of us. And when you, when you add in an even lower tax base in Florida than in the state of Georgia, then he, he arguably could have had a, a more lucrative financial deal with the Rays. And it all gets back to this for me, and we were talking about this, Harold. It just felt like he wanted to go play in his home state. He makes his offseason home in California. As much as the Braves claim him as their own, and he is, he's a California native that wanted to go home. So, it, it you know, he went there for a deal that wasn't like, okay, I have to take this because the Dodgers blew me out of the water financially. He and his family wanted to be in California. That's how it feels to me. I've never heard anybody that makes hundreds of millions of dollars worried about the taxes in California. Yeah. yeah. They're there because they want to live there. Yeah. That's true. Just it. Yeah. Hey, John, let's move on. There's more to talk about this morning because there are more and more teams that appear to be needing the pitching that the Oakland A's have to offer all the time. I mean, this is a tremendous seller's market for the Oakland A's. Yeah, absolutely right, Matty. I mean, they have Montas and they have Manaya available. Manaya only has one year to go. Montas has two years to go. Both had very good years last year. Montas particularly good with 207 strikeouts. You know, we've heard of a number of teams interested in both of these guys, understandably so. Both outstanding pitchers and teams are desperate for pitching. So we've heard of the Twins, the Cardinals, the White Sox, the Royals, the Yankees, and I'm sure there are many more that are on both one or more of these pitchers. So, um, you know, Oakland is taking its time. I don't blame them. I understand it's uh, they move quickly. Look, they've traded Chapman. They've traded Olsen. They've really got on with their fire sale. Uh, and, uh, you know, in this case, I think they're going to get it the biggest payoff they could get probably for Montas with two years to go with the 200 plus strikeouts. And uh, I don't blame them for taking their time, but they are holding up the rest of the market. There are some, some good pitchers left, like Pineda and Cueto and Smiley and some others. And they're kind of waiting to see who gets Manaya and Montas. John, this is not right, man. They're getting a free pass on what they're doing. Nobody has come down on the A's. We were throwing fish yeah. in the water for Derek Jeter when he was trading guys with the Marlins. Look, they've gotten rid of so many players over the last 12 months, less than. I mean, 
Oh, they have, they have think, an all-star I, roster I they've got. I think rid people of. are coming down on them. I think that especially locally, they they have been roundly criticized again for the business model that they think is necessary, where they cycle down in order to cycle up and keep the payroll where they're comfortable. I think they're getting a lot of grief for yeah. this. Yeah, one thing I think that saves them is they've done this before and they've done it very well. I mean, they've won 90 plus games in half of their seasons, which is not easy on that payroll. So give Billy Bean and, and Dave Force credit. They kind of saved the bacon here by doing well with it. The team that I would don't really get is the is the Reds. Um, they, they've, you know, um, I'm not really un understanding. They have a stadium. The A's don't have a stadium. The A's have less re revenue. Uh, I, I kind of get it more with the A's than I do with the Reds. And they play in a division due to the Reds, and it seems to be a little bit more conquerable. There's not as much combined payroll there right now. The Cardinals are the interesting suitor in the Manaya sweepstakes for me. Manaya and Montas, if you want to mm -hmm. say that. Because they may go as a package uh, deal. Oh, boy, that'd be interesting. But I think it, it, it really, so much of this depends on, on Jack Flaherty's health. And, and if he is good to go, then maybe there's not as much urgency to add to the starting pitching. They'd still like to add, but if Flaherty's not right, the Cardinals have super extra motivation to try to make a deal with I, Oakland. I, I hear you. But, John, I also heard the Yankees were in on a package deal for those two. Is there a truth to that? Well, the Yankees definitely need pitching. Uh, they definitely do have prospects to go. And uh, Billy Bean and uh, Brian Cashman have an excellent relationship. I mean, I'm, I'm still going to be surprised if both of them go one place. But, uh, you know, the Yankees need help. Right now, Toronto looks much the best in that division. Tampa, to me, looks second best. And the Yankees in Boston look third and fourth best. So Yankees definitely need to do some work. I don't think there's any question about that. So if, if you're trying to collect starting pitching, you're calling Oakland. If you're looking to help your relief core, you're calling the White Sox. Because what a bullpen they have with with so much uh, almost excess, I'd like to say. Two closers, one of which we've heard <laughs> trade rumors about all winter long. Is Craig Kimbrell going to be a White Sox this year or not? Uh, I certainly hope so. I mean, they have a half dozen guys, Matt, who throw 98 or above. It's pretty incredible. Kimbrell obviously being one of them. You know, he did not do as well as a setup man. He was a very good attitude about it. He was certainly willing. He understood that Liam Hendricks was the closer. And he did the setup job, but he was not as good at it. So he's got $15 million salary. Makes sense to trade him. I'm sure that he wants to be traded. He's not going to come out and say it because he is a team player, but he certainly wants to close. Uh, here is a long list of teams, and I will read them off, that could use potentially a closer. A few of them have already had Kimber once. Boston, San Diego, Cubs, uh, you know, and then there are other teams that never had him, but have connections. Philly, Dave Dombrowski had him in Boston, and then Toronto could use a closer, potentially. We got St. Louis, Seattle, belt. Nats, Detroit, San Francisco, and Texas. Long list of teams. I hope they figure it out because Kimbrell should be closing somewhere. This is I, I a high-end all-star pitcher. Yeah, no doubt about he it, is. Harold. No question a high about all-star pitcher. Hey, look, I look at it this way too, John. Every year is a new year, a new team. Everything's different. I don't care if you won a World Series or not. You don't know what happened over the winter. Players change. Everything changes. And for me, I look at the White Sox guys, and you had an established scenario when Kimbrell came into it. You had an established team that was rolling. It's a new spring. So if they already are unestablished, we had Liam on the show. He wants to pitch wherever. He's the key to me. If he accepts a setup role or use me differently, that's fine because it's a new team. This is 2022. And if Tony La Russa can convince this team, here's how we win a World Series and Kimbrell's the closer, then you don't need to, to worry about a trade. If they can't coexist, Somebody's got to go. Well, and not to mention, if there was a glaring deficiency someplace on the roster, then maybe you, you know, you take your excess to fix that deficiency. There isn't. No. So why not keep the band together? And, I, and, I hear. And you. the better the closing, the way they shut games down, they got a better chance of yeah, winning the series. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch all this stuff over the next few weeks because uh, we're less than three weeks away from opening day. John Heyman with us on a Friday. John, thank you. More from John a little bit later on.